Scott, I thought a great place for us to start our conversation would be around this idea of a crisis hunter. That is a phrase that is used uh, a couple of times in the book and seems to be a great way to label what these guys are doing. Is that a new concept or have people always been kind of hunting crisis? It's just now with the way that the finance industry is set up, you can actually make money off of it. Yeah, it's interesting. Crisis Hunter was what they, uh, Nassim and Mark, called themselves when they launched their first hedge fund, Empirica. And uh, it was also one of the original titles of the book, <laughs> uh, Crisis Hunters. Um, talking with the publisher, we, we changed it to Chaos Kings. It's a little catchier. But they, so they invented this concept back in the late 90s. Uh, it evolved in their first hedge fund, Empirica. And as far as I know, no one had ever created a strategy like this that delivers these explosive returns when the market crashes. And it was pretty successful back then. They shut it down mainly because Nassim uh, couldn't handle the stress of the trading because it's it's a very stressful strategy because you actually lose a lot. You're uh, consistently you don't you don't lose a lot of money, but you're using losing a lot over time. Um, the idea is, yeah, you might lose like a year or two, and then when the market crashes, you make way more than you lost. That's how it's supposed to work. Uh, relaunched it. Mark relaunched it in uh, 2007 with Universa, and pretty good timing because <laughs> 2008 uh, saw the global financial crisis. And an interesting story I tell in the book is how... When they launched Universa, which people look at now as being this very successful hedge fund, managing billions of dollars, no one wanted to invest. <laughs> it was such a weird, unique strategy that people just didn't get it. They traveled the country talking to portfolio managers, pension funds, family offices. And, you know, everybody looked at this and said, you know, wait a second, I'm going to be losing money month after month on this thing. Like, that's terrible, you know. Uh, traditional Wall Street strategies like very smooth, consistent returns. Problem is, strategies like that often have what Nassim calls hidden risk, and they can suffer a lot during these crises. So they have a very lumpy return. You know, year after year, they're losing several percent, and then all of a sudden they make a thousand percent or two thousand percent. And that's it's designed to be like, you know, time to crashes protects portfolios. It also gives investors a big chunk of cash when everything else is down so they can take that and plow it back into the market. So you start the book uh, talking about Ackman, uh, Bill Ackman, obviously, during yeah. the uh, pandemic, um, he had put on basically an insurance protection uh, using a somewhat similar strategy, uh, a couple of billion dollars there uh, that was able to offset losses and kind of a long portfolio. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, this idea that like in this hyper-connected world, people are uh, predicting that there's going to be more and more volatility. And ultimately what this is doing yeah. is it's profiting off of that volatility. And so, uh, yes, Nassim and Mark seem to have kind of pioneered this as a standalone fund with this specific strategy. But is it really that different than maybe some other hedge fund managers may be doing when they're hedging or when they're trying to uh, specifically protect the portfolio that is long? Uh, it depends on how the strategy is implemented. So, you know, what Ackman did in early 2020 was a, uh, a strategic trade based on his assessment of what was going on in the world with the pandemic, with markets. And he saw early on that the risk uh, that he understood COVID uh, posed to the world wasn't being priced into assets at, yet in, say, fe you know, February, early March. So he was able to load up on these positions uh, pretty cheaply. He, I think he only put in like $26 million, and that turned into 2.5 or $2.6 when when the market crashed. So that's a strategic uh, trade made on timing like just similar to what a lot of the uh you know the big short guys did for the housing market in the mid 2000s that is not what universa does their strategy is basically you always have that big short on no matter what's going on you don't make any predictions you don't try to time things it's just there because according to you know Nassim's black swan uh, view of the world is that nobody can predict these things. They come out of the blue. Uh, they happen so fast 
that it's extremely difficult to to trade on them. Like, you know, Ackman did it. Uh, he I, I see what, you know, he did in early 2020 was a trader, you know, at the top of his game. I mean, he was really <laughs> moving. He, he And one of the crazy things that he did was, he, you know, he got those billions and he put a lot of it back in the stock market in March of 2020, which is, you know, who who does that? <laughs> but that trade earned him another billion. Um, th- th- you know, this is something that uh, you know it's it's just very hard to do on a consistent basis year after year. The universe strategy is you don't time things; you just put it on. It's a you know what they recommend is you put about three percent of your portfolio into that tail hedge, and the rest that frees up your uh, rest of your cash to put into stocks. Now, this obviously become a very, very popular strategy if you just look at the AUM, right? Uh, I think the latest numbers that you include at the end of the book is uh, Universal has about $20 billion of assets under management. They have 21 yep. employees, right? So yeah. kind of a, a billion dollars of AUM for every one employee. Um, yeah. And uh, you mentioned that when they launched, they only had $300 million or so of assets. And so as they have got more and more adoption, they've now become one of the top 25 largest hedge funds in the world. Uh, when you see that, is that just people uh, kind of buying into the idea of the uh, kind of tail hedge? Is that them doing a better job of marketing? Like what's driving so much AUM going into that strategy now? Um, and is it something where, you know, they went from 300 million to 20 billion on their way to 100 billion? Or how do you see kind of that future life of how big the fund could actually get? Yeah, their AUM has moved up and down uh, a lot over the years. So it it jumped up pretty quickly after the global financial crisis. And then it's, you know, one of the challenges they've encountered is keeping investors in the strategy because after a few years, a lot of them look at it and say, hey, you know, I'm losing this money or all these, you know, past few years. Uh, I don't think the market's going to crash. Everything looks fine. And they pull out. So uh, I, I tell uh, some humorous and sad story really about CalPERS uh, and how they were uh, making a big investment in Universa in starting around 2016, 2017. Um, They were putting billions into Universa. And by late 2019, they had about, I think, a position of about 5 billion. And then a new manager took over looked at the tail hedge and said, you know, this is a waste of money. Uh, <laughs> um, we're just losing cash. It's never going to get big enough to matter for us because we're hundreds of billions uh, big. So in early 2020, a uh, couple months before uh, COVID um, really hit, they eliminated their entire position uh, at Universa. <laughs> so that's one of the hard things about this strategy is, is keeping people in it. So Calpers gave up a lot uh, by pulling out. Um, why Why is it so big? I think that, you know, the strategy definitely is catching on uh, and more and more funds are uh, getting into it. I've been getting feedback from fund managers, uh, tail hedge fund managers who've read the book and say like, oh, it's great you're writing about this because it's really important um, and it's effective. I think people are starting to figure out it's effective and it's I, I write about and as Mark and Nassim have have talked about, their strategy doesn't fit within the standard uh, portfolio theory uh, propagated on Wall Street and in finance schools that try to uh, that that favor strategies with low volatility um, that are smooth risk adjusted returns. Um, you uh, you manage your risk in a way to maximize your returns. They do pretty much the opposite of what modern portfolio theory recommends. They have extremely volatile returns, losses year after year, and then big jumps. And that just doesn't fit within the models. I think that people, you know, Wall Street is starting to figure out like, okay, doesn't fit the model, but it works, <laughs> right? So uh, yeah, there's a there's a lot more funds out there. Universe has got 20 billion. We'll see if it grows. Maybe people really freaked out after 2020 the pandemic and it, i think it it woke up a lot of people to the fact that there is increasing risk out there and it, you know as globalization expands as connectivity expands that's you know one of the driving forces of covid was airplanes uh people getting on planes you know from the milan fashion show and 
you know, flying back to America or other parts of Europe, carrying the virus with them. That uh, a lot of epidemiologists say this this is a, a new world we're living in where these viruses are going to spread more rapidly, create the kind of chaos that we saw that year. So I, I think that that's one of the big things that's, that's driving the, the money flows into these tail hedge funds.